Hey, 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 it's Mr. Bass, and I've got my multi-species box in today from Monster Bass. And as I was going through it, I was thinking to myself, man, there's some awesome lures in here. I want to do more videos with the lures that come in my Monster Bass box just to kind of show you guys some of the things that you can do. And I thought I'd talk to you about one very important specific technique that every bass fisherman should be fishing with. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about it, but if you've never tried it, hopefully today I can give you some insight on how to fish and why you should fish the bladed jig. That's right. It's also called the vibrating jig, and it originally was always referred to as the chatterbait because Z-Man created technically the first chatterbait, and it took the fishing world by storm, started winning all kinds of tournaments, the next thing you know, every company under the sun is making some sort of a vibrating or bladed jig. Now, the reason I want to talk about this today is because if you know anything about bladed jigs, there are some bladed jigs in the market or vibrating jigs that are considered creme de la creme, top of the market. Jackhammer is one of those. And there's others out there. But another one that's right up there on par with the jackhammer is the Thunder Cricket by Strike King. The Thunder Cricket is an awesome vibrating jig. And it just so happens that this vibrating jig comes in the monthly subscription Monster Bass boxes on a regular basis. In fact, I just got this one last month out of my multi-species box. So... I love the Thunder Cricket. I'm going to talk to you about the Thunder Cricket today and how to fish with it. And if you're looking for an amazing deal on Thunder Crickets, go over to the Monster Bass website. You can get a four pack for only 36 bucks. That's $9 each. And that's about six to seven dollars cheaper than you're going to find it anywhere else. All right, as far as rod reel line goes, when I'm fishing a bladed jig, I usually go with a heavier line. And uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, the main reason is that uh, I fish around a lot of heavy cover. Uh, so 10 pound test doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, the other is that when um, you are horsing these fish in, they it, it's often ag an aggressive bite. You're often uh, in grass or punching through grass or on the edge of grass or around other cover and uh, a lot of times they'll also hit it close to the boat where you don't have a lot of leverage and you really got to horse them quick so I use a, a heavy line usually I'm going to use a 20 pound test uh, the lowest I'll go down to is probably 15 pound test but most of the time I'm going to have 20 or 17 pound test line on and I use fluorocarbon for all of my chatterbait or bladed jig fishing. As far as the reel goes, I think uh, a super fast reel doesn't make sense. I kind of tend to go in that kind of medium range, what some people would even call slow range. Now, I'm usually, I've usually got a 6.3 to 1, 6.4 to 1, up to a 7.1 to 1. Somewhere around in there is usually what I'm going to be throwing my bladed jig on. I have thrown the bladed jig on the 8.4 to 1, 8.5 to 1 reels. Um, but sometimes you really need to slow that retrieve down, and I find it's just difficult to do with a really high speed uh, reel. So I'm going to stick with that six to seven range uh, is what I'm going to use uh, as far as my reel goes. So even though we're talking about a big single jig hook, and these penetrate well, you still need a pretty stout rod. So I'm usually fishing with a heavy or a medium heavy action rod when I'm fishing the Thunder Cricket. Anything, I, I probably would not go down anything lighter than a four power rod is just for reference. Um, four to five power rod is usually what I'm going to throw. And as far as my tip goes, I, I'm not as concerned about the tip. A fast tip is fine. I'll even use a moderate tip if I, if I absolutely need to. In fact, some people say so you should use more of a, a moderate tip and they'll use a fiberglass rod as well. In fact, I think Brett Height uses a fiberglass rod and he's the king of all uh, bladed jig fishermen out there. But for me, uh, I, I generally use a graphite rod and it's going to be in that four to five power range. 
seven, seven to seven and a half foot long. That seven foot three is about perfect, I think. And uh, really, that's about all you need. Now, as far as retrieve goes, it's pretty easy technique. You just chuck it out there and start winding. And depending upon, uh, there are nuances uh, where you can kind of slow your retrieve, you can flutter it some, you can drop it to the bottom and drag it a little bit. There are things, but generally speaking, just throw it out there and reel it in. That's what I do first and that's what I recommend with you. And a lot of times that's all you need to do and you're gonna kill it, you're gonna kill it. So I won't get into a lot of detail about the different little nuances you can do. You can look up other videos if you really wanna dive deep into that. Try to keep this video at a reasonable level. But those basics will get you through just fine. But let's specifically talk about the Thunder Cricket today because it's really an amazing lure. Uh, this is the half ounce size and normally just for typical bass fishing in ponds and creeks and rivers, streams, lakes, most of the time I'm throwing either the 3 8 ounce size or the half ounce. And this is a half ounce Thunder Cricket. This is the green pumpkin color. It's a very natural color and uh, it looks great and it works great. <clears throat> couple of things about uh, a vibrating jig. When you're fishing a vibrating jig, almost always you want a trailer on this vibrating jig. You can see there's the hook keeper on it and it's made to hold some sort of a trailer on the back of your lure and I'm gonna show you uh, a few trailers that you may want to use and all these trailers also come in the monthly monster bass boxes on occasion and every one of these could be used and I kind of want to expand your mind a little bit as to the kind of trailers you can actually use when you're fishing a vibrating jig. The first is a beaver style bait. Believe it or not, uh, beaver style baits really do well on the back of a bladed jig. This here is, uh, came out of the Monster Bass box. It's from X-Zone Lures. And it's called the Adrenaline Craw. This Adrenaline Craw could absolutely work as an excellent trailer on the back of your bladed jig. Another great lure, this is kind of a crawdad style lure as well, is the Punch-Out Craw by Gene LaRue. This punch out craw also makes an excellent bladed jig uh, trailer. And I'm gonna rig a couple of these up here in a minute and just show you what they look like and how, how you might be able to use them. Some of you might be saying, well, I thought you were supposed to put swim bait trailers on the back of uh, chatter baits or bladed jigs. What are you doing putting crawdads and beavers and these kind of things? What I'm telling you is, don't get your mind stuck into just one type of a trailer. Here's the one that came in the Monster Bass box and you can buy this on their website. It's the Strike King Rage Swimmer. This is a great little bait. It's proven over and over and again. Time tested, proven bait that's going to work. It makes a great trailer. But it does have a big thumping tail and sometimes you don't want a big thumping tail, which is my, why you might want to go with one of those um, other lures I showed you previously, or you might want to go with something really cool like this bait. I've really been slaying them on this lately. This is the Chase Baits Curly Bait, four inches long. It's basically just a big honking grub, but I've been fishing it on the back of my Thunder Crickets, and dude, it's really sweet. It's got a very nice action. It's got a big, big paddle tail that really gets noticed in the water. And it just looks like a great natural bait fish in the water. So something like this Chase Baits, man, that's going to be my first choice, I'd say. And in fact, today when I go fish this, I'm going to put this on some of my Thunder Crickets. Here's another one by Smart Baits that you could try in the same vein. This is called the Swimming Jesse. And uh, 
It's just another one of these swim bait style lures. This one doesn't have as deep ribs on it like say the Strike King does. This is this kind of reminds me of like the Reaction Innovation Skinny Dipper. Um, again, has a nice big tail and it, it would work good. And I'm going to try this on my bladed jig today as well. So let's start with the Swimming Jesse. Now, right now, if I were to rig that just like this, this is how big it would be. And to me, that's too long for what I want to do, do today. So what I'm going to do is you can kind of see where the head, and they start to do a gill plate here. I'm going to take some scissors and I'm just going to chop the head off. I'm going to chop a good inch off of this to shorten it up. Let's go ahead right here. We'll just cut that off. All right, so I've got a more compact profile now. And I'm just going to thread this thing on. I'm going to line it up here and see where my hook's going to come out. Great, it's going to come out right at the end of that hook slot. And you just kind of push that bait up. Now when you're putting a trailer on, you want to try to keep it as straight as you possibly can so that it swims right. If you're kind of careless about this and, and don't, don't put it on very straight, you're going to notice it in the water. Okay, so now check that out. I mean, that's just a great looking bait. And <laughs> I'm excited to go try this bad boy because I think it's really going to be special. Look at that, Goofy. Got a fish. Got us a fish. Hopefully he stays on. Stay on, stay on, stay on, stay on. Stay on, fishy. Look, there he is. Look, there he is. There he is. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Stay down, stay down. Smart baits. Oh, dang. Good fish, good fish. Nice. <laughs> Thunder cricket. Thunder cricket. There it is, boys and girls. How's about that? Monster bass, thunder cricket, monster bass. Beautiful fish. Let's do it. Let's do it. See ya. See you later. Nice. Okay, this is a bluegill color thunder cricket. It's one of my favorite colors. It's a great thunder cricket. And I'm going to put this big four inch curly tail chase baits grub on there. Uh, they call it the curly bait. But look at that thing. Dude, this is one of my new favorite baits. And I really think a lot of people won't be throwing this. All right, got my monster bass bait bag. Works great in a kayak. And uh, so I already have these pre-rigged. I don't even have to. I don't even have to do anything. Just tie on my new Thunder Cricket with my big curly tail grub. There's one. That's a good one. there spawning bass dude oh I told you I told you spawners spawners oh, got it that is unfortunate that is unfortunate I had me a donkey right there on the chase baits. These baits work, boys and girls. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna rig up here is I'm gonna put a chigger craw on because I've got a black and blue chigger craw here and I've actually got a black and blue thunder cricket. So 
so I'm gonna match those up. And if you've never seen a trigger craw before, this uh, is what you're looking at. And before I rig it, I'm gonna tear off these little, these little, uh, whatever you call them, little tentacles, I guess, because uh, they're just gonna get in the way of the action of my skirt. I don't really need, need those tentacles on for a bladed jig. Now you can do this, you know, flat or um, vertical. I'm going to do this horizontal. All right, so that's what it looks like with that chigger craw on, and I bit once the one section off, and boy, that looks great, doesn't it? To get more action in the water, I'm just going to pull these pinchers apart, and there you go. Maybe from a different angle. There's one. Oh, that's a good one. Stay down. Stay down. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, I hope it stays on. 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 Oh, dude. 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 Get in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, snap. Oh, look at that inch. Look at that inch. Look at that. It's all right. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. We got us a fish. We got us a fish. We got us a good fishy. On the Thunder Cricket. Thunder Cricket with the Berkeley Chigger Craw. How about that? Not bad. Not bad. Oh, he's got a little bit of deformed mouth going on there. But that will work. How's about that? He, he just about freaked Andy out. Andy about, just about jumped out of the boat. Which, uh, that would have been a whole new set of freak on for him. So that was a fun day of fishing. I really enjoyed it. Even though the conditions were not ideal, we've had literally two solid weeks of rain. And the one little break in the rain, I went out and fished. You saw that lake just chocolate milk, super muddy, super dirty, really, really tough fishing. But the bladed jig, that thunder cricket, it makes enough ruckus in the water, enough vibration that uh, even in super dirty water, it's still effective. And it's such a versatile bait. You can put so many different trailer types on there. I just showed you a handful of trailers that I went out and tried and still had a super enjoyable day. It's a great way to fish. I highly recommend it. Head over there to the Monster Bass website. Take advantage of that deal. You won't regret it. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, Happy Thunder Cricket Fishing!